Welcome to Illuminati Silver. We tell her the truth about silver. Today is Monday the 9th of March 2020. And yesterday we published our video entitled Economic Thoughts Before Markets Open Tomorrow. Where we refined our weekly update published on Saturday stating that whilst we were expecting gold and silver prices to continue to rise, one should not be surprised to see a sharp fall particularly in silver, thereby widening the gold to silver ratio even further. Now the time of producing this video podcast is currently 1720 GMT. And so far Wall Street has been open for a couple of hours and the gold and silver markets are still running, but have moved in quite an erratic way. The Dow is currently down an enormous 1,685 points at 24,179, while gold is down $5 at 1,669, having actually risen that opening, or just after opening, to $1,702, and then falling back to 1658 and now recovering. And silver is down 39 cents to $16.95, having been as low as 16.57 and as high as 17.59, thereby increasing the gold to silver ratio to 98.4 to 1, though at one stage today it actually touched 100 to 1. And we thought we were going to make a video this evening saying GSR 100 to 1. Now the dollar index has fallen again as we suggested on Saturday, down 1.07 points at 94.87. Hardly surprising in view of last week's rate cut and the possibility of a further cut next week. Now for further details on this please refer to our weekly update video and we've put a link in the description box below. Now again, as we mentioned yesterday, the result of the breakup of what was known as OPEC+, Plus, which was Russia removing itself from the OPEC cartel price fixing arrangement, oil prices have plummeted $9 in the case of Brent crude, which now stands at $36 a barrel, and $8 with regards to WTI crude now standing at $33 a barrel. Other equity markets have also suffered, with the FTSE 100 down 7.7%, some 496 points, at 5,965. And the Eurostox 50 is down 8.45%, at 2,959. And the DAX index is down nearly 8%, just short of it, at 10,625. It is important to bear in mind that those analysts who we call chartists who follow cycles are now advocating that gold is close to its top with a fallback due in the weeks ahead. Now if this does happen silver will be hit even harder which is why we are not buying silver ourselves at present. Now, of course, the geopolitical situation, being as it is, without doubt, is supporting gold prices. And frankly, today's considerable fall in equities, and yet gold and silver not going through the roof, can suggest only two courses of action. The first is that either gold is still being sold off to counter further equity liabilities or margin calls, or two, investors are converting back to cash with a view to buy back into equities when this route eventually stops. Now we stated last week that we would not be surprised to see gold hit $1,700 this week. And if it did not happen this week, it would happen next week. Well, it's done this, but not closed at that level as yet, though there's still time. If it does close above $1,700, we believe $1,750 is on the cards in short order. But if not, then we may see that fall back to 1650 and eventually 1600, as the chartists may be suggesting. 
Silver, however, is in a world of hurt at the moment. Certainly this is our view and our estimate based on the calculations that we carry out. You see, for equities to fall by such a large margin and for silver prices to go down 1.5% does not bode well for the precious metal. Now, there is no doubt that with central banks either having already or promising to lower rates further, the investment community seem to be of the view that the industrial demand for silver is likely to plummet as global trade contracts significantly. This does not mean that we see silver moving down to 12 or $13, but it could mean that we may very well hit the low we predicted in our 2020 silver forecast and took a lot of stick for it of $15. And we'll be hitting it, to be fair, earlier than we envisaged. Now, though, having said that, if the demand for gold really does take off and these investors commit their dollars back into the precious metal, especially seeing the US dollar index falling, even though silver will lag gold quite considerably and probably with a gold to silver ratio above 100 to 1, then its price will be supported in the early to mid $16 region. However, if the cycle guys are accurate and gold does hit its top any day now and then recedes, then silver is going below $16. Seems quite ironic really to many and almost unbelievable that equity markets are in near freefall and silver often touted by the pumpers to be the commodity that will make them wealthy beyond their wildest dreams, will in fact also fall in value. But this also happened back in November 2008, let's not forget this, where equity markets collapsed and silver prices fell to its two and a half year low at just above $9 an ounce and then rose to its all-time high some 15 months later. It will be interesting to see if history repeats itself, but again, as we've stated for the past two years, silver will underperform gold during economic recession, but then eventually catch up towards the late stages of the gold bull market or peak, or just after it. So we've encountered a topsy-turvy day with precious metal prices seesawing for much of the day, and silver in particular. Now, before we go, we draw your attention to an article published in Bloomberg, or in Bloomberg.com, and we shall just read a few lines from it. Quote, A credit derivatives index that measures the perceived risk of corporate credit surged by the most since Lehman Brothers collapsed, as a crash in oil prices sent shockwaves across global markets. The Market CDX North American Investment Grade Index jumped Monday to the highest level since February 2016, according to prices compiled by Bloomberg, and it's the biggest increase since September 2008 in closing level data tracked by ICE Data Services. Also, another Bloomberg article published today quoted, Scary as Monday's start to US stock trading was, the halt that it triggered looks to have done its job at least for now. The S&P 500 plunged 7% four minutes into the session, tripping a New York Stock Exchange circuit breaker aimed at preventing a broader panic. After trading resumed, the index dipped just a bit more, then quickly paired losses to trade about 5.5% lower as of mid-morning in New York." Unquote. Something for each of us to consider moving forward. Now our Richard and Greg channel also produced a video earlier today, in fact at midday GMT, and in that we provide an update of where the various countries stand and what preventative measures one should take. So if you haven't listened to that, we've provided a link 
in the description box below. Now, finally, and to conclude, we repeat what we stated in yesterday's video at closing. Quote, let's all stay tuned this week for the ECB decision and the following week for the FOMC decision and the week after for the Bank of England decision. We suspect that March is going to be one heck of a month. Unquote. Thank you so much for listening. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to our channel and press the bell sign so that you're notified of our videos as and when they are published. We hope you have found this video interesting and informative. And if so, please give it a thumbs up and share it on social media. Please ensure that you have subscribed to our channel and press the bell sign so that you are notified of any future videos. Also kindly visit our website at IlluminatiSilver.com and if you haven't already done so, please subscribe either as a free or paying member for regular email updates and offers. Disclaimer. Illuminati Silver owners come from a background of banking, international wealth management and economics. Having now retired from these worlds, we are not qualified to give investment advice. Therefore, this and other productions must not be deemed to be giving such advice and merely represent the personal views of its owners. Thank you.